You guys might remember from previous episodes that my gravel bike is out of action. Global part shortage and all of that. But we want to go bikepacking this weekend to Scotland. And there's going to be a lot of off-road, so i um, going to have to sort out the mountain bike. Got some bags ready. I haven't actually put them on here before, so I don't know if they're going to fit. And I need to make some tweaks, because currently it's got the widest handlebars in the world. And it's kind of making a small creaking noise. Today's video is going to be dedicated to the setup. First stop, backyard bike shop. Carbon handlebars, I haven't got a carbon blade. You gotta build up workshop tools, slowly, slowly. They're expensive. I am doing this outside because there's no mountain bikes in there. Yeah. I, I like mountain bikes, but it's servicing wise, there's completely different parts, different lead kits, different levers, different bottom bracket standards, different tyres, inner tubes. It's just easier. We specialise now in road and gravel. I don't even work on my own mountain bike, so I'm just going to wing it. Ho hopefully, we don't. You heard him. Don't turn up to the shop with your mountain bike, otherwise, you will be turned away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is disappointing. Such inside. a good noise. Put it back on. You can edit this out. Oh, wait, I know why. Vacuum. That was worth it. <laughs> it is very bad form to go to a bike shop and then expect to borrow tools off them and do the job yourself. So just let Nick do it. I'll do it for you. Just there, yeah? Well, oh, I want it nice and aero. Super aero. One, we've got to factor in that these grips add in about a centimeter of width. Oh, yeah? yeah. On the end there. Five mil. 760s, you want to go to 720? Yeah, I think 720 is sensible. So that's four centimeters off. Just take four centimeters on this side and then. Shuffle the bar along, yeah? Shuffle the... Yeah. Yeah. My second favourite tool. Let's fix. Martin and bike mechanics. Yeah, Easy, man. Like. Thanks, mate. It looks a bit more normal now, doesn't it? It's not narrow. It's 72 yeah. centimetres. Yeah, it's still stuff. wide. So. Especially for a little guy. Imagine Jimmy on that. <laughs> Mate, why have you got a brand new Stanley? It's a new Stanley. What's wrong with the old one? Retired. Uh, workplace accident. Yeah, like just basically we overworked him a bit and yeah, it's disastrous. I don't know, I could show you, but it's, I'm not sure it's safe. Show me. Tragic. <laughs> Mind the axe. I love Stanley. Yeah, I mean, he's helped me loads through the years. What happened? I'm sure I'll polish up, but I mean, yeah. Well. South African health and safety, I mean, like, it's non existent. So. I think at some point last week he set up fire. Didn't you I? think? Yeah, well. Here's a little tip for your off road riding GT85 on your pedals after every ride. Because the engagement is metal on metal, they can get a bit squeaky and rough feeling. Unclipping can just feel, well, really nasty. A little spray of this when you're cleaning your bike to keep things smooth goes a long way. So here's a rundown of all of the stuff I'm taking with me this weekend. I'm probably gonna forget some stuff, aren't I? Biggest stuff first. Tailfin Aero Pack, you've probably seen this before. They're a sponsor of the channel after using it in multiple bike packing trips in the past. Essentially, it's a seat pack, but it has these two carbon, in this case, they do an alloy one as well. These attach to your through axle or quick release, fits pretty much any bike, and then this bit clamps to your seat post. The claimed capacity is 20 liters, but of course you can strap stuff to the top of it and just keep kind of going up. We did it with Vietnamese hats and pizza. They've also added cargo cage mount, so I've retrofitted a Fidlock magnetic holder uh, so I can put an extra bottle on the back of the bike there. I've gone with the off-road Fidlock bottle with the lid on because I imagine being at the back here on the bike it's going to get sprayed with shit lid so you don't get some weird disease. Inside here will be this sleeping bag, 700 grams. Sleeping mat, which is uh, one from a hiking brand, and this Alp Kit bivvy, which is quite big for a bivvy because it's got some special features which I'll show you in the following videos where we actually use it. I'm borrowing all of this gear from Emily because I don't have any wild camping stuff, so it'll be an experience. These three massive bits of gear I'm going to try and squeeze all in the trunk of the tail fin uh, because that will be the least accessible bit of bike packing luggage I'll have on me. Uh, and obviously you'll only need these in the evening when you unpack. So if they can squeeze in, that'll be great. I've then got two panniers made by Tailfin. These are 22 liters each and currently they're just full of bubble wrap, I think. Nice thing about these is that they clip onto the side of the existing Tailfin rack really quickly just using this clamp and to access them, 
they're just a roll top, so packing them is really quick and easy, and you don't have to faff around, especially if you're tired from riding. I'm gonna be taking two cameras with me, GoPro for on the bike, then this camera, the Canon EOS R. If it starts raining, this can go in one of the panniers, so handy having the space. Because I'm using a full sus mountain bike, I'm guessing a frame bag is completely out of the question. Perhaps someone could make a custom one that fitted, uh, but I think I'm gonna have enough storage space otherwise if I'm using a bar bag as well. So I've opted for as much water as I could possibly carry inside the frame triangle. Another fidlock with a lid and a fidlock without a lid. I've then got another 600ml bottle, which I'm attaching to my fork with a uni base connector and a uni base mount. It's gonna be 26 degrees tomorrow, which is very hot for English people, so I wanna carry as much water as I possibly can. The reason I'm only running one of these and not on both forks is because I've only got one base connector thing. I would be running them symmetrical if I could. 29er mountain bike tubes, butyl. I don't mind carrying the extra weight. Always worth it, just in case your tubeless fails. Lazine mini pump. Stan's tubeless dart thing. Tires are Hutchinson Kraken 2.3s with Stan's race sealant inside. Mounted to Velo Elite carbon wheels made by my friend Tom. Probably won't need lights because there's so much daylight at the moment and we're heading north so the situation gets even better. But just in case, Garmin Varia's front and rear. These are the ones with a sensor in that tell you when there's a car coming. Fairly limited space on the integrated carbon handlebar from the Villa Erta. I guess it's a racing bike, not a bike packing thing, so it doesn't matter so much. But it means I've opted to not run a head unit because the light's there instead. I'll be recording my ride on this instead. It does power and heart rate and Jimmy's in charge of the route, so. Just gonna follow him. At the front of the bike, skin grows back food pouch. This is really handy just to stuff all your gels and bars and peanuts and sweets and whatever you want. Just cause it's so easily accessible, you can just straight to the mouth. Finally, to finish off the bags, upside down Attica's bar bag. I always like running a bar bag when you're bike packing because it's easy to get the stuff out of. So if there's instances where there might not be so many stops and you need to stock up on food, that's the place that I go to to put it in because you just in one zip, you can almost access it while you're riding, if, you, uh, if you're careful. So that's all the basic stuff and a rundown of the gear. Naturally, we're taking a bunch of spares as well, like little multi-tools, chain breaker, all of that stuff. All your usual stuff that you would take on a ride um, if you don't wanna get stranded. But really, it's a chance to test out this setup to see if I wanted to use it for future trips, uh, because there's quite a few trails up here, like the, I think it's the West Highlands Way and the, a few kind of walking specific trails that really are in the middle of nowhere beautiful and uh, pretty good for XC mountain biking. So a nice little test. I'm not gonna set up my suspension and stuff this trip. I'm just gonna use it locked out for now because I wanna do some mountain biking next week and don't wanna have to switch between, but um, get used to the position and uh, some time on the bike. I think it uh, can't be a bad thing. Stay tuned to this channel for the next few days where myself, Jimmy, Chris, and a special guest who has recently ridden his bike back home from China will be doing a fun adventure in Scotland. Thank you for watching and bye for now.